Yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? Your boy BQ. This is the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. Thanks for swinging by once again. Uh, I picked up a little Bluetooth microphone here, so it's not the most optimal sound quality in the world, but it is better than just talking directly into my cell phone. So this will give me an opportunity to do a little bit more audio content for the channel when I'm on the go. So I know that I'm about a week behind on this, and uh, but, I, but I really wanted to talk about it. I wanted to give my opinions, read your opinions, about uh, Wrestling Observer reporting that Mike Bennett could be heading back to Impact Wrestling, could be bringing Maria ben Canellis Bennett along with him. If it's your first time here, this is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fans, so consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, giving this video a thumbs up. But let's talk Mike Bennett here. I want to give my opinion on his run in Impact in TNA. He was probably one of my favorite stars on the roster. And to me, he was probably the last like TNA signing. And when I say that, I mean he was the last dude that I can recall that they kind of signed under the TNA banner. And he was a TNA guy. They rebranded him a little bit. But he was a TNA guy. He wasn't like now you sign Matt Cardona and, you know, he's on the roster, but he's not on the roster. And that's a lot of the people in Impact now, Jonah. You know, a lot, a lot of these people, they just bring him in, uh, much like MLW is doing, you know what I mean? And, you know, they did make the Aaron Rex signing, but he was gone three months later. But he was, that, he was like the last that I can recall bigger signing in the in the lasting days of TNA, the end of TNA, that was actually there for a little while. He was over he was there over a year. So he didn't do a couple year run or anything like that. And I started the Impact Lounge when TNA debuted on Pop TV in that general time frame. And I had always said I felt Mike Bennett was primed for a huge world title run. And I also said I thought he was going to break Bobby Roode's record. I thought he was the one that was going to do it. Now, we can say what we want to about WWE, but when they have someone holding a record that they don't want them to hold a record anymore, they find a way to break it. And I always found it weird that the Impact has really still held, held on to Bobby Roode's title reign. Um, but I thought Mike Bennett was going to be that dude. I truly did. I was damn near willing to bet money on it. And now let's talk Maria, Maria Canellis real quick. She, even though she had a bit of a stranglehold on the knockouts division, she was a pretty good on-screen character. She was a good heel. She got Allie over big time. Because when Allie showed up at Impact, when they signed her and she was cherry bombed, it was kind of like, mm, I don't know what they're going to do with her. You know what I mean? They found a way to make her a character with a non-character based wrestler at the time and Maria Bennett played a huge role in that she played a huge role in getting you know Sienna a push uh, Laurel Van Ness who we know is Chelsea Green obviously and there's a history there which would be kinda cool but she had a bit of a stranglehold on the division at the time the knockouts division had a lot of girls in it who didn't wrestle when she first debuted so you had Rosemary who wasn't wrestling for a while you had Raquel, who didn't really wrestle. You had Allie, who didn't wrestle. Um, there was there was one other that I can't I can't place at the moment, but they had a lot of girls who just couldn't wrestle on the roster. So the the knockouts roster was super shallow, and they found a way with her to like really make it work. You know, just just her presence being there, where she made the knockouts division a, a strong storyline, and she made it work. Now, as far as their departure from TNA, th this is what I said at the time, too. I thought it was really premature. And if you think about, I don't know if you've read the article or maybe it was a podcast interview with Moose. You know, he was a free agent recently. He had interest in going to WWE. He's always said he's, he wants to wrestle there at some point in his career. He's always said that. And I'm paraphrasing here, but he said in an interview that you know, he wasn't done with Impact. He hasn't hadn't accomplished what he needed to accomplish for himself and for his career. Uh, you know, Impact dedicated a certain amount of time to him. 
a um, certain amount of creative and story. Again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. And you can't really just leave and not see that through. You know, like this world title run that Moose is going to have here, or that he's in the midst of, is huge for his wrestling career. You know, if he didn't have this world title run, he may may not be seen in the same uh, the same light when he becomes a free agent again. Uh, so with that being said, I thought Mike Bennett saw an opportunity to go to WWE. Uh, they told him he could go straight to the main roster, and he took it. You know, and and gosh, maybe he would do the same thing if that opportunity were presented. Maybe. 80% of the wrestlers would. You know, hey, you don't have to go through developmental. You're going to go straight to the roster. You can make main roster money. So did he make a mistake? I don't know. You know? I don't I don't know what he... I've heard a few interviews with them. Um, I don't think they would do anything different. But he didn't accomplish what he needed to an impact. Like, he was... He was going in good direction... And I think once it became clear that he likely wasn't going to stay, I think he knew for a little while, then, you know, he, he was de-pushed. You know, he lost to Braxton Sutter and, and things like that. When he first debuted, he had the derby hat, he had the suit, you know, a little swag to him, if people still even use that word. And that really worked for him. When they started putting him, you know, when he became, you know, the man bun, and uh, pineapple jackets and stuff. I, I thought he lost a little bit of his flair. But when he first showed up, uh, he was really, truly primed for greatness. I just think he left well before uh, it was his time. I think there was things he needed to accomplish. And, you know, Kevin Owens was the one that, from what he, you know, they have said in interviews, was the one that got him away from TNA. He, he was going to resign. Him and Maria were going to resign. And, uh, and Kevin Owens said... That would be a stupid decision. Um, and then, you know, got him signed in WWE and said, hey, aren't you glad you listened to me? You know, I don't know if he is that glad looking back at it. But there was there was things he needed to accomplish. He wasn't a champion. You know, he, he won the X Division title in a bullshit manner. He didn't wrestle the X Division style, even though he's capable of it. Uh, you know, he was in that Ultimate X match where he acted like he was uh, physically incapable of being able to climb the ropes and... All that, like he was standing in the middle of the ring, jumping up and trying to get it. You know, so it, it, second half of his run wasn't that great. He had a world title match with Lashley that, you know, a heel versus heel. Like that was his fight, you know, his big world title opportunity. Like he should have been built up for, a, you know, a good year and then got a big Bound for Glory or Slammiversary world title main event where he won it. And uh, he would have been a great world champion. And before he actually left TNA, he had said his goal was to be the TNA world champion. Like, he seemed like he was pretty, you know, I did say I thought he was leaving for a while, but so I actually take that back. I think the intent always was to stay. It just didn't work out, obviously. But um, had he accomplished, you know, more in impact and, and had some gold and everything, you know, maybe, maybe things would have shook up a little bit different for him. So we're going to see if he returns or not. They canceled an, He canceled an indie booking that was in line with the Impact taping, so that's, you know, the, the rumor started. Uh, I would like to see him, I know he's not going to, but I would like to see him come back as the miracle. I like the, the music. Um, I, I liked everything about it. I'm not really a big, like, Kingdom guy, OGK. That's just not really my thing. They're doing a little NWA work right now. Not really my, my jam. I liked the Miracle character. That's how I like to see him show up. He's he's not going to do that. Um, but he should be a heel. Maria Canellis should be a heel. There shouldn't be any kind of baby face run with these with these people. Um, and, you know, Maria Canellis would be a great on-screen dynamic with uh, Gail Kim again, too. You know, because now Gail Kim is an on-screen role. Hopefully they're going to start taking Scott Demore off TV more. Um, you know, the star of the show, Scott Demore. I don't really know. So, uh, you know, I wanted to give all those opinions out, but I do think that uh, he would be a great addition, um, and I, th I think he could step into the main event picture very easily. Again, I don't really want to see the kingdom. I don't want to see him in a tag team. I want to see the miracle Mike Bennett. That's probably not where we're going to see, uh, but I would be down for it. So thanks for listening, guys. I'm your boy, BQ. I'm out. Peace.